through a period of ramp up many times. You know, uh, once again, my boss Nat likes to say it's all about scale. It's all about how much oil we can collect. So 40,000 gallons in 2005 was a lot of oil. We produced 40,000 gallons of biodiesel because conversion ratio is one to one. So as we've built that collection network of restaurants, we've had to build our production capacity. And so we did that a couple of times. We doubled it from 40,000 gallons to 80,000 gallons. And then Jim said, you know, they displaced 100,000 gallons of uh, diesel uh, this year. Most of that came from us. Um, so where are we now? Well, we're going to double our production again. And with the help from the Rhode Island EDC and a grant we were just awarded last week, we're going to be able to double our production to 1.5 million gallons of biodiesel a year. So that's very exciting for me, the college graduate who did this at URI, developed the small scale lab at URI, to find myself in this place, in this company. And but as we do this, as we expand our production capacity over, uh, over and over again, we're, we're always cautiously optimistic. And we're cautiously optimistic because the lack of consistent federal government support. And I say that because the biggest example is the tax credit, the biodiesel blending tax credit. For those of you who don't know, every gallon of biodiesel you blend with a petroleum, with a gallon of petroleum diesel, uh, not with a gallon of petroleum diesel, with petroleum diesel, you get a dollar. Or the, the blender, the producer gets a dollar. Uh, that gets renewed on a yearly basis. So right now, it's not renewed for next year. And for two years, it wasn't renewed for next year. And so it's hard for a company that relies on that kind of legislation to plan in the distant future when we don't know if it's going to be there or not. If it's not going to be there, that's okay. We can plan for that. If it's going to be there, then we'd like to plan for that too. But it's hard for us to make those plans without knowing that it's going to be there consistently. So like I said, we're very cautiously optimistic. Uh, and I, so I'd like to bring it back again to the point that there are many uses of, there are many uses to biodiesel. There's many applications that can be used, like I said, in any diesel engine, in any home heating oil. And I gotta nail that point again. No modifications needed. This is a drop-in fuel. You don't need to change the engine in any way to use it. It's great. Rudolph Diesel had the right idea. And so I'm gonna turn it over back to Jim, and he's gonna talk a little bit about those end user uh, applications and how you as end users can use biodiesel. So I'll uh, <clears throat> we are the result. Five minutes. We have uh, lots of applications, as you can see, many different vehicles. There are generators uh, that all use biodiesel. Um, and during the unstable time when the federal government did not reinstate that tax credit, locally we worked with senators to have the motor fuel exemption law passed here in Rhode Island. So three years ago, with the help of the likes of Josh Miller, who was a part of it, Dan Connors. Uh, many others, we had this law passed which makes all biodiesel made within this state exempt from motor fuel tax. Now, that was really special. No other state does that. This state really knew the importance of supporting the local economy, supporting small family business. It was a crucial step to help bridge the gap. Um, and biodiesel knows no political boundaries. Only in the state here. Um, so, like I said, we had support from both sides of the aisle, but here in Rhode Island. That doesn't translate just yet down in Washington, D.C. Um, it's unfortunate. It was great to see uh, Senator Reed in White House here. Um, we had to run and catch him down the hall to reemphasize the importance of the federal tax credit. So if you leave here today, wanting to help the biodiesel manufacturers in Rhode Island. The one thing I think is important to talk to the senators and let them know how important it is. Um, until we really realize the true cost of petroleum, it's hard for local sustainable biodiesel to even compete. 
Um, there's so many government subsidies on their end. I believe the true cost would be nine dollars uh, a gallon. I've read studies anywhere from seven to thirteen. Anyway, it is a story of hope. Here in Rhode Island, these two companies have gotten together. And uh, just to go back on one point, it was 2007. We're up to 100,000 gallons. Uh, starting off with the mere under 10,000 in the first year. We just had our million gallon celebration this summer. <laughs> and it's really special. It's really nice to be able to work with the community. The guys in Newport do an amazing job working with local restaurant partners. Um, I believe you have about 1,400 restaurants locally. Uh, it's pretty spectacular, the support from the restaurant industry and from every individual to help this small scale project rise. But um, again, uh, what was your quote? It was, it's a fragile positive story or something like that. <laughs> one million gallons means it's one gallon for every Rhode Islander. So this is not the silver bullet solution. We need to do plenty. Uh, my recommendation is you plant three trees before fall comes while you can still dig the ground. That is a positive step forward if you want to help the environment. There's many steps and we need to take them all. Um, there are many good solutions and uh, here we are. Sustainability starts at home, plant fruit tree. So.